Hey guys, David East here, and in today's screencast, we're going to be going over making the mailbox section of our mailer application. So in the previous tutorial, we created the sign up section, and now we're going to focus on the mailbox section. So this page is a bit similar to the previous one. We still have our top and our left menus. We still have a title bar with a different title, but we also have some settings to add to the right of the title bar. We still have an alert so we can reuse that. And below the alert, we have a table. The table has four columns. The first one is a checkbox that selects the column. The second one is the from column. Then the next column is the title of the message. And then we also have the date of the message. And that has a little arrow next to it to signify sorting. However, we're not going to get around to writing the sorting feature of this page. But we are going to write the feature where we can select each individual mail item. And if you select the checkbox at the top, it'll select all of the mail items. So let's get going on the HTML. So let's start out by creating a new HTML page. And we'll call this HTML page mailbox. And before we get going, we need to add our resources, such as our less, and we also need to add in the top menu and the left menu. And since we're not writing this in any specific web framework, we're going to have to paste in the menus. Well, let's change our title first. So instead of sign up, we'll call it inbox. And let's create our section. This will also have a class of content. But we'll also give it a class of mailbox. So this way, anytime we add a style inside a content that needs to be specific just to this mailbox page, we can qualify that selector with this mailbox class. For those of you who are familiar with namespacing, this is a similar concept. So inside of this section, we'll provide our title bar. And we'll give a text of inbox. And now we'll focus on the settings that will be on the right side of this title bar. So we'll create a span and we'll give it a class of title settings. So the first part of the settings is that they show pagination and that it's a left arrow and then it'll say one out of 30 of 30 and then there's a right arrow. And then after the right arrow, there's a little icon for settings. So we'll use an I tag and we'll give it a class of FUI arrow left. And then below that we'll provide text and it says one through 30 of 30 and then we'll provide an icon for the right arrow. And below that, we'll have an icon for the little gear. Now let's take a look at this in Chrome. So our menus look right, and our title bar looks right, except for the settings portion. We're going to need to float these settings to the right and figure out what's going on with our gear icon. But let's do a little styling in the browser. So let's select the element. So let's set the position of title settings to absolute. And let's take it to the right and take it 25 pixels. Let's also set the font size to 14 pixels and let's give it a dark gray color. So let's add these styles to our local copy. So in content.less within title bar, we'll add a section for title settings. And we'll first change the right variable from 25 pixels to menus padding left. We'll change the font size from 14 pixels to small font and we'll change the color to gray dark. So let's go back to our mailbox HTML. And the reason why the gear is missing is because I lost my mind and I didn't type in the right class for the icon. So instead, we're going to need FUI gear. So now in Chrome, our gear is showing up and our settings are set to the right. So now let's focus on our alert. So let's take the alert from our signup page and let's paste it in below the title bar. And we'll have a bit of a different message. So we'll say, you have a ton of spam in your junk folder. You should clear it out. So back in Chrome, we have our alert. So now let's focus on the mailbox table. So below the alert, we'll create a table and we'll give it a class of mailbox table. And let's start with the table header. So we'll create our T head tag and then we'll create a table row. So the first table header will be the checkbox. And we're going to be using the custom flat UI checkboxes, but for now I'm going to use a plain checkbox as a placeholder. So the next header is from, then we have title, and lastly we have date. And then below the T head, we want to create a T body and we'll create our first row. And I'm going to paste in the example data for the first row. So the first row has a checkbox. The message is from Twitter. It has a title of suggestions based on Magic Lantern. And we have our date, which is a time in this instance of 1131 AM. And in our header, let's change our type from text to checkbox. So in Chrome, we have our table. It's not positioned and it doesn't have any styles on it. So let's create a less sheet that styles this table specifically. So we'll call this less sheet mailbox table. 
So let's give this mailbox a width. And now let's style the text within the table. So we're going to need to style the THs inside the table head as well as the TDs inside the T body. So we'll set the color to gray dark. And then we'll also need to set a border. So we'll set a border of two pixels solid and it'll be gray off white. And we'll also set a padding left of 24 pixels to give some space. And we'll add this to our manifest and we'll add it below alerts. So now we have a nice start for our table, but we need to provide it some padding on the edges and we also need to control where the borders come into play. We actually don't want any borders next to date, so we're going to have to remove that. So we need to get this mailbox table some padding on the outside. So let's collapse in the mailbox table and let's wrap it in a div. And we'll just call it wrap. And inside of content.less, we'll add a style for wrap. And wrap will supply a padding of 30 pixels on the left and right, which this variable is called menus padding left. So now our table has its proper padding on the outside. So let's work on this border issue. So we somehow need to remove the border from the date column. But we can't just remove the border from the date column. We also need to move the border right from the column next to it. So we're going to use a CSS selector called nth child. And I'm going to select the third nth child, which this is the column next to date. And I'm going to set its border right to none. Now let's remove the border left from the date column. And we're using another CSS selector here called last child. And this will grab the last element in the series, which will be the date column. And we also want to change the text align within date. We want to text align it to the right. We're going to want to change its padding and give it padding to the right 20 pixels. So now we've gotten rid of the border and we align the text to the right, but there is a bit of an issue with our checkboxes and more specifically with our checkbox column. We need to center the checkboxes inside of that column. And to do so, we're actually going to have to change the width. So now let's focus on turning these checkboxes into flat UI checkboxes. So down at the bottom before the body tag closes out, we'll add a reference to jQuery and the flat UI checkbox plugin. And with this alone, we're almost there. Let's open up our table and where there's the input type of checkbox, we're going to replace that with the following snippet. And this is a checkbox wrapped within a label that has a class of checkbox. And the checkbox has a data toggle with a value of checkbox. Let's go down and add this to the other checkbox as well. So back in Chrome, we can see our checkboxes are now flat UI checkboxes. However, they're not totally centered in the column they're in. So let's fix that. So the checkbox column is the very first column in the table. And since we targeted the last column in the table with the selector last child, it stands to reason that we can use a selector called first child. And to center the checkboxes within the column, we're actually just going to adjust the width. And we're going to set the width to 7%. And using a percentage based width will provide us with a more graceful resizing of the table. However, though, since it's a table, it really only will resize so gracefully. And before we check this out in Chrome, let's add more data to our table. So rather than taking you through adding each line at a time, I'm just going to paste in all the data. So now we have our table with all the data and all the checkboxes. And there's a bit of a space between our alert and our table, so let's quickly fix that. So let's add a less file for this mailbox page. We'll call it mailbox.less. So we're using a class of mailbox, and that's the class of mailbox that we added onto the content section. And this will allow us to set specific styles inside the content section. So we'll take the alert and we'll set its margin bottom to 45 pixels instead of the 70 pixels it's currently set at. And we'll add this to our mailer manifest. So now as you can see, we've reduced the space. So there's one feature that we're still missing. And that's when you select one of these checkboxes, you want the row selected to have a light green background applied to it. Also, if someone selects this top checkbox, we want all the checkboxes to be selected in a light green background applied to all rows. So now that we've completed our mailbox, we'll focus on the checkbox functionality and implementing that in jQuery in the next video.